So this case presentation involves a 65-year-old uh, gentleman who uh, presented with, to his urologist with some urinary incontinence and uh, on digital rectal exam was, was normal but was found to have a PSA of 10.8. This prompted a uh, transrectal ultrasound and biopsy revealing Gleason 7 cancer, 3 plus 4, and multiple cores. Um, he underwent a workup with a bone scan and CT scan showing no evidence of metastatic disease and was presented with treatment options for intermediate risk prostate cancer. He elected to undergo radical prostatectomy and pathology confirmed a Gleason 7 cancer but with evidence of extracapsular extension and negative nodes, uh, which is pathological T3A N0 disease. After surgery, his PSA was undetectable. Yeah, this is a very common presentation. It's about the average age for prostate cancer and on initial PSA screening found to have uh, 10.8 although the urinary incontinence doesn't necessarily go along with uh, a common symptom associated with prostate cancer, we can see it as a urinary obstructive symptom from overflow incontinence. And this patient may have had an enlarged prostate and, and evidence of some urinary obstruction resulting in that. Um, his choice of treatment for intermediate risk uh, prostate cancer really comes down to either surgery or radiation forms. And for somebody like this, if we treated him with radiation therapy, we might offer him an additional short course of hormonal therapy. For many men, surgery represents a very reasonable option and gives us the advantage of both treating the urinary symptoms as well as his prostate cancer. So continuing on with this case, the patient went about two years with an undetectable PSA, at which point in time his PSA started to rise rapidly and rose over a short period of time up to about 35. Um, at which point in time he was referred to a uh, medical oncologist for further treatment of recurrent prostate cancer. He was worked up with a bone scan and CT scan, which at that time were negative, and he was started on androgen deprivation therapy. He got an initial good response to androgen deprivation therapy with uh, a PSA decline down to about 0.5, but over the course of less than a year, his PSA again began to rapidly rise. Um, during that period of time, he uh, again underwent workup with a, a CT and bone scan, at which point in time, uh, when his PSA was around 15, he was found to have uh, multiple new bony metastasis on bone scan in his spine, pelvis, femur, and rib cage. Uh, however, his CT scan confirming the bone metastasis didn't show any visceral disease or lymph node disease. The patient was followed initially uh, with just hormonal therapy and his PSA continued to rapidly rise, and three months later it was up to about 145, at which point in time he began noticing some increased fatigue as well as uh, uh, some migratory bone pain. At that point in time, the patient opted to treat for treatment with abiraterone and prednisone and was also offered the additional treatment of radium-223, which he elected to do. Over the course of his first three treatments of radium-223, uh, his PSA declined significantly down to a level less than 10, uh, while his ALGFOS remained stable. Um, he completed all six treatments of radium-223, at which point he underwent restaging with a CT scan and bone scan, essentially showing stable disease with no new lesions identified in his bones. Um, the patient tolerated therapy well overall, but did have a little bit of grade 2 fatigue uh, that was transient, uh, as well as some grade 2 anemia. In this case, this patient developed uh, an undetectable PSA following radical prostatectomy for about two years, at which point his PSA began to rapidly rise. He did get worked up with scans to show no clear evidence of metastatic disease on bone scan or CT scan. But remember, his prostate's removed. His primary is gone. He is, by definition, metastatic disease. Whether it's widely metastatic, whether it's regional, we can't really see by scan at that point in time. But even with his PSA up to 35 and starting on androgen deprivation therapy, in my mind, this is a patient with, uh, with metastatic disease, microscopic metastatic disease, if you will.